Hey everyone, it's time for one of the most requested videos I've ever made. How do you tell the difference between an INFP and an ISFP? There are quite a few differences between these two uh, overall fairly similar types. The first is that the ISFP places the key importance in life on life lessons. When determining their life script, their overall idea of reality and who they are and their sense of identity, the ISFP looks to their history, who they've been, what, who their parents are, what their roots are, what they are connected to, where they have worked for the last past years of their life, where they grew up, what culture they grew up in. The key importance for the ISFP is honoring and valuing these past anchors, these past connections, these former life lessons. The ISFP lives and wants to honor life lessons and life lessons play a generally positive role to the ISFP. To the ISFP, philosophy is purely a kind of relaxation. Where the INFP finds their overarching life script, their overall life story and philosophy and theoretical thinking and devising scenarios in daydreaming and fantasizing and coming up with and finding their inner story, devising, creating, rewriting their own inner story. The ISFP has already established it by how they have lived in the past. To the INFP, philosophy is like a wake-up call. This new thought, this new perspective can have a profound transformation on the INFP's perspective. It can wake them up, it can make them sprout wings, it can make them feel this sudden rush of energy to do, to explore, to, do, to shape, to create something new. And the differences don't stop there. When you look at INFPs as actors, as in how they act out their life script, how they make decisions, how they live in real-time life, in the moment, in what's happening around them, the INFP lives their life as creative types first and foremost. INFPs live as platform players, scouting out their possible next steps, thinking about different platforms around them, thinking of what next decisions they can make. INFPs are so good at thinking of and being aware of different decisions, almost to the point where they become overwhelmed by it. Overwhelmed by realizing that, oh, I have so many platforms available for me. What do I jump for? What do I reach for? And the INFP perceives their life as a dialogue. They're constantly interacting with everything and everyone around them. They're interacting with the share, with the people, with the books, with everything happening around them. It's like to the INFP who is happy, who is in flow, everything around them is alive. Everything around them is full of potential. Everything is interacting with them in some way or form. This form of dialoguing is essential to being an intuitive and perceiving type. The ISFP as an actor is so different on this level in the sense that the ISFP places the key importance on instinct. The ISFP loves living in tune with instinct, with how everything around them makes them feel, with vibes, social and systematic and structural vibes around them. People, the vibe of the room, the vibe of the environment is constantly influencing them and getting them to do things. This is sensing and perceiving. Sensing and perceiving is about how in tune you are with your body, with your instincts, with your adrenaline, with every root part of you. As an ISFP, it's also the case that you are kind of a natural talent. You got, in many ways, the ability to naturally perform well at anything. Because you are in tune with your body, you're in tune with your environment, you're in tune with your surroundings, and you're usually able to vibe with it, whatever happens. The ISFP can watch you play soccer and then they can go out and somehow they're able to do what you did. They're able to somehow just repeat it. And it's like, how did you learn that? Well, you see it what you did. To the ISFP, it's the acting style is so much based on just, in a sense, going into character, just going with the flow, just going with the moment, just going with your instinct, trusting your instinct. And that's also why ISFPs tend to actually be drawn towards athletics, towards kinesthetics, towards feeling your room, feeling the things around you, feeling what you're doing. 
And yeah, let's be honest, INFPs, you're not really good at that. Generally, the key to identifying if you are an INFP or an ISFP is to regaining your energy, finding your energy, finding your sense of enthusiasm, finding your passion, finding your hobby. It's when you have your hobby, it's when you're engaging in what gives you lust, what gives you enthusiasm, what gives you excitement, that you can truly see the difference between an INFP and an ISFP. ISFPs and INFPs in autopilot, without energy, or perhaps overly focused on work, or overly conscientious, uh, can sometimes miss the difference. When all you're thinking about is getting that job, or getting that promotion, or doing well at that task, or <laughs> but, uh, something that regards feeling and uh, perceiving, it makes sense that you keen in on this so much that you somewhat lose your intuition or your sensing. At the root of it all, INFPs gain energy from being philosophers and from being creative. Where ISFPs gain energy from being instructors, from being kinesthetic. But yeah, if you're not drawing energy from life, if you're not drawing thrill from possibility, then you'll find yourself in the kind of middle zone between being an INFP and an ISFP. Still, there will be differences. One way to tell the difference between an INFP and an ISFP is to look at their stress source and their triggers. When an ISFP is under stress, under anxiety, what tends to happen is they tend to enter into this kind of undisturbed monologue. It's like they disappear from everyone else, they stop listening to everyone else. When an ISFP becomes stressed, it's like everyone else disappears, like everything else ceases to exist, like everything around them is just gone. It's only that thing, that focus, that idea that exists, that often crazy or stupid idea. And nothing can stop this ISFP until they've seen this idea through. When an ISFP goes into stress, it's like everything is about self-discipline, diets, lists, routines, calendars, everything is supposed to be planned out and perfect in, in a neat box and in a neat list and in a neat order. Suddenly this INFP is taking up tap dancing and suddenly they're waking up 4 a.m. Uh, in the middle of the night to start sewing or doing something really weird. And beyond this, the INFP becomes restless. They're constantly on, they're constantly scanning everything around them, they're constantly looking around themselves, like they're, so, like they're worried or anxious about something. They can even get a little almost Hulk-like, almost irrational in their actions and irrationally impulsive. And the ISFP, the ISFP under stress, the under anxiety, the main issue with ISFP under anxiety is they are so sensitive to ideas. Uh, a simple idea from someone else can uh, temporarily under anxiety grab a complete hold over the ISFP. Suddenly everything is about this new possibility or this new pattern. Suddenly everyone around them is displaying this behavior. Suddenly every one of them has this diagnosis. Suddenly everyone has this issue. The ISFP can start reading into patterns that aren't there, to start imagining things, to start, in many ways, uh, connecting false thoughts. Maybe they're looking for signs that their partner is breaking up with them. Maybe they read a list on their website, on the internet, uh, stating uh, 10 signs if your partner, to show if your partner is cheating on you, and suddenly their partner is definitely cheating on them. It's this quick jump to conclusions that can completely disorient an ISFP on their anxiety. So yeah, these are the main differences between INFPs and INS ISFPs. In order, INFPs are NPs, making them creative, dialoguing types, where ISFPs are instinct-driven and survival-oriented types. ISFPs are history and lesson-oriented types, where INFPs are philosophy and theory-oriented types. ISFPs under stress are irrationally detective-like, and also almost um, obsessive monologuers. INFPs under stress are more or less irrationally self-disciplined and prone to restlessness and to <laughs> irrational quick decisions. INFPs are people trying to bring ideas, perspectives, philosophy, to deal with their highly sensitive uh, personality. 
ideas and perspectives provide INFPs with energy, with passion, with motivation, with enthusiasm, and the enthusiasm that helps them cope with their environment, to cope with physical reality. ISFPs are, to many, in many ways, sensitive to ideas, sensitive to impressions, sensitive to possibilities, in a sense that ideas play tricks on their minds. It, uh, a simple idea can get a complete hold over them. The possible, the imaginative, the dream feels much more intense to an ISFP than it does to an INFP. And the ISFP generally seeks to avoid intuition. INFPs are trying to make ideas and perspectives real, trying to prove and confirm their hypotheses, where ISFPs are trying to make deductions and possibilities and to find uh, possibilities based on their physical surroundings and what they see around them. And people have for a long time been blurring the lines between INFPs and ISFPs by making ISFPs seem almost bizarrely intuitive perhaps because of this emphasis on ISFPs as introverted intuitives. No, introverted intuition doesn't make ISFPs into these bizarre artists. That's not how introverted intuition affects the ISFP. What introverted intuition does to an ISFP is it kind of gets them into these faces. ISFPs deal with faces or manias in a sense of uh, obsessive uh, prioritizations of uh, certain activities, uh, almost suddenly going into, oh, I'm going to be a professional basket player. And then after that, oh, I'm going to be a professional tennis player. Oh, I'm going to be a ballet dancer. And then keening on that and then going so far into that and obsessing over it and making it <laughs> and ignoring like everything around them and everything against that, everything that kind of goes against that until, well, they uh, realign and shift and uh, <laughs> get a snap out of it. And yeah, I'm not saying some of times these manias can be positive, but they're not as beneficial as they are to, say, an INFJ or an ENFJ. They are generally childish whims to the ISFP. An ISFP goes into a mania to avoid responsibilities of reality, where an INFP, sorry, an INFJ goes into a mania out of a sense of uh, passion and out of a sense of high stimulation. So yeah, because of that uh, problem with blurred lines between ISFPs and INFPs in MBTI fiction, I think a lot of ISFPs are struggling to know if they are ISFPs and INFPs. Hopefully this video helped, but if it didn't, feel free to send me a message and I'll be happy to find a way to solve your issues. So yeah, because the lines have been blurred so much, a lot of people are struggling to find out if they are ISFPs and INFPs, but hopefully this video helped. And if you need more help, feel free to send me a message. I do offer type consultations uh, for just $10, so... Um, I'll provide a link down below for anyone who's interested in that. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.